story. Those seven people who were killed when a tram crashed in Croydon early this morning. 51 passengers were taken to hospital, eight of them with serious injuries. The driver of the tram has been arrested. Our correspondent Robert Hall reports from the scene. It was a rush hour journey on a line that carries millions every year. But tonight the two car tram lies on its side, close to Croydon Sandyland station, as investigators try to establish how this tragedy unfolded. The first calls came in just after six this morning. Emergency responders found some injured passengers walking from the train, others still trapped beneath it. Light went off, so everybody was just screaming, shouting, but there's about two people behind and beside me. They've already passed away. So I have to manage to get myself out of the door. So by the time I look at my face when I come outside, I had a big scar and um, I have a lot of um, cut pain. So by the time I, they rush us to the hospital, I've been feeling the pains already. Taye was among 51 people taken to hospital, some of them seriously injured. The death toll rose as recovery work continued. This afternoon, London Mayor Sadiq Khan arrived to be briefed by emergency crews who told him seven people had been confirmed dead. My prayers, my thoughts are with family members and uh, loved ones, but also I want to pay tribute to the hard-working men and women behind me who will be working when it gets dark as well to make sure the recovery part of this operation is a, uh, a success. Late this afternoon, police said the tram had been travelling significantly faster than allowed for this section of track. Taye has his own questions about safety on the line. For now, though, he's simply grateful to be back amongst his family. Well, earlier I spoke to Nigel Harris, managing editor of Rail magazine, and began by asking him how investigators will be able to establish the cause of today's crash. Trams do have black box records and they record whether the power was on or off, whether the brake was on or off, the speed, how hard the brake was on or off. So they will now have a profile of exactly what configuration the controls that tram was in as it headed down that gradient to that very sharp curve which has got a 12 mile an hour um, speed restriction on it. Um, the RAIB, the Rail Accident Investigation Branch, has already said clearly that it was travelling at a speed significantly in excess of that 12 miles an hour. Now, the use of that word significant is significant because trams work on the system, the track and the tra tram work together to provide an inbuilt safety margin of about 100%. So if it was doing twice the speed limit, um, it would have been an uncomfortable ride for the passengers as it shot round that curve at the bottom, but it probably would have made it. The fact that the tram is on its side implies a speed significantly in, in, in excess of that. So what are we looking at? 30, 40 miles an hour? Speed certainly is an issue and that is going to emerge fairly soon, I would think, as the investigation reports. Sure. And on occasions, uh, rare occasions such as this, there's, there's no mechanical facility in the tram to stop that excess speed, presumably. Well, the driver is in charge of his tram, obviously, and they're fitted with, um, with what are called track brakes, which are very powerful. Um, but no, there's no automatic system to, to, to bring a, a tram to a halt as there is on, on, on mainline trains. And it's indeed difficult to see what sort of system you would have to activate an emergency brake. And it's worth saying at this point, um, off the top of my head, I'm not quite sure how long the Croydon tramway has been running. Pr probably the thick end of 20 years. Well, at 27 million passengers a year, that's half a billion people carried safely. Trams are safe. There is clearly something gone wrong here, but we should not run away with the idea that tram systems are in any way unsafe. Indeed, the last fatality was in 1959 in Glasgow. Uh, yes, I think it's important to stress that. Um, we mentioned the black box. Uh, how much does that tell us, potentially? It will tell you exactly how the tram was being driven in, in the, as it approached that curve and the configuration of the controls at the point at which the, the, the tram turned over. So it will tell you the speed, whether the power was on or off, uh, whether the brakes were on or off, how severe an application of brakes was on. Um, one of the things the investigators will have done, they will have walked up the track behind the tram, up the incline there, and they'll have been looking for things called witness marks on the rail head. 
because the magnetic bre brakes is a piece of steel which actually touches the rail and a magnetic current stops a tram really quickly. And if you think about it, that's very necessary for the street running sections where people are, you know, maybe walk out in front of a tram and the, the driver has to stop very quickly. Sure. But those brakes will leave a witness mark on the rail. So the investigators will know whether the brakes were even on or off as it went down that gradient. And again, that will all emerge in the preliminary report, which I would expect fairly quickly. Nigel Harris of Rail Magazine.